introduce Richard Gordon, the founder of Quantum Touch, author of Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal, and Your Healing Hands, The Polarity Experience. He's been at Energy Healing for at least 30 years, and I adore him, I love him, and Well, it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for coming. This has been an extraordinary experience and journey for me in my life. I learned this work back in 1978, just months before my first book came out. I thought I knew a lot about healing at that time, but was absolutely astounded by some events that were to come about and the bringing forth of Quantum Touch. Now, just so you know, Quantum Touch has been called a significant breakthrough by Alternative Medicine Magazine as well as an essential skill for every lay person and professional practitioner. Um, the founding president of the American Holistic Medical Association, Dr. Norman Sheely, called this work the first technique that may truly allow everyone to become a healer. And that really states it so clearly because ultimately everybody has an extraordinary ability to do healing work, but for some reason it's gotten lost over the centuries. Now my journey began before 78 because I had written a book called Your Healing Hands, The Polarity Experience that was just about to come into print in a few months when I met a gentleman named Robert Rasmussen. This man told us stories about healing that I just couldn't believe. He said that he could move the energy through his body so powerfully that you could just see bones rolling back to alignment. And I'm thinking, yeah, sure. And he told us stories about tumors that would dissolve and broken legs that would heal and just wild tales. And he was very large and very blasé. And I didn't think much of him until he demonstrated the work for the first time. And I was about to have my first of a series of what I call life shock experiences. Now, life shock experiences, when you see something happen that's so out there, that's so far beyond your belief, you think, how could that possibly occur? Well, the woman who invited me, her name was Marita, and she stood in front of the room, most of her clothes off, and you could see this big uh, S-curve in her spine. She had a major scoliosis going. And he said, well, here's what I do. And he put his thumbs up to the occipital ridge, that's these little openings in the back of your head, and he just touched lightly, and they just rolled back to alignment. Then he touched her hips, and the hips rolled back to alignment and then he worked up and down her spine a number of times and you could actually see the bones moving before your eyes. It was really surprising and shocking and in the course of that day I discovered that I could also get the bones to move into alignment. That really surprised me. He turned out to be a neighbor of mine and I would visit him quite often and I would go over to his house and work with him and apprentice with him and see what I could learn. He had this extraordinary ability to work on all different kinds of conditions and he had long waiting lists of people who wanted to see him. Well one day I was back at my house, it was around Easter time and a woman came to visit and stay with us for about a week and she brought a bunny rabbit to our house. And I thought, oh this is so cute, this bunny rabbit hopping around our house until I realized there's pellets everywhere all over the floor. And I figured I better put this rabbit back in a box. So I cornered the rabbit eventually, didn't want to be caught, I cornered the rabbit, put my hands on the back of the rabbit and was trembling like it was going to die. Figured it was going to be dinner because that's just how rabbits think. And instead of putting it back in the box I thought what would happen if I just start running energy into the rabbit. So doing the breathing, doing the sweeping that I'll describe in a few minutes and the rabbit started to relax and it stopped trembling. And a few moments later, my friend's watching me and she saw the rabbit stretch its front let paws forward and its back paws back as far as it could and, and all of a sudden, it became a very big rabbit. My hands are on the back of the rabbit and my friend is watching just with her mouth open, shocked, and I run energy into the rabbit and then all of a sudden, the rabbit pushed against my hands and flipped itself over on its back with its paws stretched out <laughs> like it was sunning itself on the beach in Hawaii. It was absolutely relaxed. That was shock number two to my system. 
The third shock came when I visited a woman down in Los Angeles. I was living up in Santa Cruz at the time. And she had osteoporosis so badly, she was hunched over like this when she walked. And when she looked at me, she had to lift her head so she could see me out the top of her eyes. I was going to do a demonstration with a number of people on how quantum touch worked. I wasn't very confident, but I knew I could run the energy. And I had her go into another room, put on her shirt backwards so we could see her spine. And it was frightening. Bones were sticking out like dinosaur bones at the top of her spine. At the bottom of her spine, they were indented. There'd be one vertebra here near the top, then another one over here, another one there, and then one over here. It was just a random assortment, and it was scary looking. So I didn't really know a lot, but I started working at the top, and then gradually, one by one, working the vertebra on the way down. And as I got down her spine, people would kind of come back and look at it and say, you know, is that looking better, or is that my imagination? And then a few minutes later, they'd say, you know, I'm pretty sure that's looking better. And then another five minutes later, or 10 minutes later, they'd say, you know, that's definitely looking better. By the end of the session, every vertebra was in a completely straight line, top to bottom. The ones that were sticking out had come in. The ones that were in had come out. And it was as if it was a movie. It was like choreographed or something. At that moment that she stood up, she suddenly became this very tall woman. And the double doors opened, and her daughter burst in. And her daughter started crying, immediately, spontaneously crying. Oh my god, mom, you're standing up straight. It was such a shock to my system, because I had my sense of what reality was. And this clearly didn't fit the borders of what I thought reality was. So I remember sitting at a friend's house on the floor, leaning up against the wall. And I heard this very loud voice in my head. And the voice said, that didn't happen. But I had to actually review the incidents. I had to review what had happened. So I didn't take the experience away from myself. It was that dramatic. I had to remember how she was bent over, looking at me through the top of her eyes, how people said, is that looking better? Is that my imagination? How she stood up and how her daughter came in crying. I had to review all the experiences because I was so shocked. The next shock came shortly after that. I was back up in Santa Cruz where I lived at the time. And Bob Rasmussen, uh, his friend, called me up and said, Bob has had a severe gallbladder attack. And he wants you to come down and work on him. So about seven hours later, just driving straight back down to Los Angeles, I was sitting at his bedside in a motel and put my hands on him, ran energy for about an hour and a quarter. He started sweating a lot during the last half of the session. He got up, took a shower, said, thank you very much. I feel fine now. And that's the last I thought of it for a long time. 14 years later, I ran into Bob again. And he told me that his gallbladder was totally fine. He'd never had any problem since I did that, nor did he have any problems for the rest of his life. He died about five years ago. So these were some of my life, sho life shocks. But each person who learns this work has their own series of life shock experiences.